Hi and welcome back to Guide to SolidWorks. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. We do this often. Um, uh, what we're going to look at today is we're going to go through a CSWA assessment piece. Now this is just practice, um, but it is a past question, so it might be something if you are looking at taking the CSWA um, assessment, then you do look at in a bit of interest. Now what we're going to do here is we are going to look at um, this assembly, this V block assembly here. So we've got our V block at the bottom, we've got our yoke here in the center, and then we've got our adjustment pin coming up and down, um, across it's down through this vertical axis here. We're gonna model these three parts up and then we're gonna assemble them together. We've given some information down the side, but all this information is given us to us in the drawing anyway. And then what we're asked to do is based on this fixed point here, in this bottom corner where our axis is um, x is negative y is negative and z is positive coming this way um, uh, assemble these components together in an assembly using that as our fixed origin position once we've got that we are then asked um, which is the correct center of mass for the assembly is it a b c or d once we've got that in position and assembled together in the assembly we will be able to answer that question quite easily and we'll run through this whole process now this is going to probably be more than one tutorial due to the um, amount of components on the assembly process required um, but we'll start getting into it and see how we get on okay so let's dive into the model so we're going to start off with this uh, v block section and I'm gonna start sketching on the front plane. Now I did say to you it's important that we know where our axes are and what we're working with in terms of the relationship um, of our origin for when we get to our assembly. So let's have a look at this. So we're gonna to go to our sketch. We'll start a sketch here and it's gonna bring up our origin on our page in the center there. If I just rotate that slightly. Now what this is giving me is my y axis and my x axis. You can see them here. My y axis going up, my x axis coming across, and my z axis coming out. So this is positive, that's positive, and this is positive, which would make drawing in that direction my negative x and coming down my negative y. So as long as I know that, it's quite simple to create my shape. To start with, this is my origin. I'm gonna be using this as the bottom corner so that we'll match up when we move it into our assembly later on. So, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line up. Come in slightly. I'm just gonna sketch out uh, this component. Now, I'm gonna sketch out half of it. I'm not gonna sketch the whole thing out. The reason for that is um, there's no really requirement for me to sketch the whole thing out. If I was to sketch the whole thing out, then um, it doesn't really make sense. I can mirror, if I draw half of it, I can mirror it across. So I've rough outlined half of that. Drop a center line in here. And there we go, we've got a center line in there. Now that center line from my origin to here is going to be 30. So I'm just going to drop that in at 30 there, coming out. I'm just going to finish off the bottom of here as well. Coming across here. Up at a slight angle. And across to the centre there. Like so. Okay, so if we start putting some sizes to this. Um, I know the gap from there. So there is going to be 20 and I know this angle from there to here coming up there is going to be 50 like so okay I also want the height of this from here to here to also be 20 and I'll just pull that in place now, this section up the side is going to be 24. I 
and this bit here at the side is also going to be 24. Now I want the overall height of this section at the side here to be 60 and that will sort out the distance of this centre section. I'm just going to drop that down so that I've got a dimension sticking out there for our 6 mil coming out there as well. Okay, so that's that um, defined most of that. We're just going to also define this top section and it has the same relationship as this bottom section here. So I'm just going to quickly um, dimension that up to suit. Like so, so that's going to be 50. what it's done is it's picked up the mate here so we're just going to um, get rid of this relationship in there sorry um, so that that now if we take that line and that line we should be able to change that to 50 like so um, we want the distance from the bot that top line to this one here to be 20 again And the gap from there to there to also be 20. And that will just fully define that half of our um, sketch. So I'm just going to highlight all that. So if I highlight all them lines and I go to my mirror option in my sketch there. And if I drag down here. He'll ask me what I want to mirror about. So I'm going to mirror about this center line here. That'll come across and then I'll take that using my um, preview as what I want. Lovely. Um, so that's come across there now. I've got that sketch in place. Um, it's showing me that it's fully defined, which is the important part here. And now what I need to do is extrude that back. So if I go to features and extrude, Now I'm just going to reverse the direction, I want it to go away from me, I want it to go a distance of a hundred. So I'm just going to type a hundred in there and that will extrude that back a hundred. And we should now end up with our full V block um, shape for our assembly there, like so. Okay, um, uh, now this is going to need a material applied to it, it is a uh, 1060 alloy so let's apply that to our materials so I'm going to go to um, materials here edit material and I want to find a 1060 alloy so And 60 alloy at the top there that's the one that I want um, uh, just checking it's got my um, mass density of 27 2700 kilograms per meter cubed that's perfect that's the one I want so I'm going to apply that and close there so we've now got our material applied as well so that is that component completed so we're going to move on next now to have a look at how we model the yoke section. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on the front plane here and I am going to start a sketch. Now you'll notice I've opened a new part here. Uh, so this is a new part model um, so that we are able to create a part of each component. So I'll start off with the yoke again. I'm going to create a center line. And this is going to come out of my origin here. I take that straight up and I'm going to put a dimension to that which is going to be 80. Like so. Okay, now from there what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, some circles. 
So I'm going to drop in my first circle there. And I'm going to dimension up the height from the center to the bottom here, which is going to be 36 up. Okay, now from there, I'm going to take an inside radius um, for the underside of the yoke, which is going to be 48 diameter, 24 radius. I'm going to create a second circle from the same mark point and this one is going to be a 36 radius times 2 giving me a there we go 36 radius on that there roughly now well we've got them two circles in place I can start to draw in some of the detail. So I'm going to use the line and I'm going to start from the top and just draw this around here. So that's my drop down from the top. Um, uh, my thickness of that coming across there is going to be 12 coming out. And then the rest of my offsets are going to be based around these two circles. So I'm going to draw a line in from the edge of the circle, bring that down, across, down, out, up here, and back into the center there, back into the edge of that circle. So I've got them in place. Now we've got lots of bits going on here, so I'm going to get rid of some of these. So I'm going to get rid of these outer sections here of these circles. So that we've now just got the one side of our yoke rather than the two circles in the middle. Now once I've got these in place, what I'm going to be looking at is um, getting the distances that I need. Now I know that from here to here, is going to be 30 because that's half the distance of my um, uh, V block at the bottom. I'm going to size here at the base of 16. So let's get that to 16. There. And my inside distance here is going to be 24. Now what I want to know is this gap here. Now my overall height was um, uh, 60 for the V block and the gap in the middle would have been 12. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to turn that distance at the bottom, bottom there to 12. So as you'll see now, I mean the dimensions are a little bit all over the place. Let's move some of these around so we can see what's going on a bit better. Um, my 24 is that inside size. My 12 is there is that step. My 30 is my distance out from the center here to this line here. We've got our 80, which is our overall height. Our 12, which is our step out from the top, and you'll see now that everything becomes fully defined with them dimensions in. Now, I only have half of my yoke here, so I'm going to mirror that across. So, mirroring tool. I'm just going to grab all of this, like so, and I am going to um, mirror that across about. So, I'm going to click here for the about. And I'm going to mirror it across this center line that we've created here in the center, in the middle. Tick there, and we'll mirror that option that um, half across, giving us our full model. Now, all I need to do with this is extrude it, and it is going to be a 20 milli diameter extrude to thickness. So we're going to have features extrude. For this model, it doesn't matter whether I go forwards or backwards. I'm just going to go backwards, and I'm going to change that to 20. And go back 20 there and tick there. 
Now the only bit that's left to do on this is there is a hole through the top. So we've got a hole in the top of this, which is a 12 mm diameter. So I'm going to just, uh, sketch a laptop face. Now I'm going to create a center line and go from corner to corner. You could go uh, straight across center there or straight across there, it doesn't matter which. I just prefer going diagonally across the corners. And I'm going to find the center of that um, construction line, draw a circle to it, and I'm going to dimension that up to 12 mm diameter. Go to features and I'm going to go to extrude cut that. Now that needs to come through this section. So I'm going to go up to surface. I'm going to click that inside surface there. So it's coming through that section up to that surface. Tick. And we know then that that is in place and we've got a hole through for that yoke. So we well, need to apply our material again to that and it's the same material as it was for the last component so I'm just going to right click edit material and rather than steel I want a aluminium alloy and I'm after that 1060 alloy again apply that close just to finish off the yoke now we've applied the material um, uh, oh, we need to put on a couple of radiuses so we're going to go to the fillet tool here and um, I'm going to set that fillet tool to 4mm radius in here and we're going to click these edges like so. Now at the moment you'll see it's just highlighting the edges. What we want to do is set a preview. So I want a full preview here so you can see what's happening. I'm just going to rotate that round and I'm just going to select the edges on the other side as well. That finishes off that model. Um, uh, we've now got everything completed there the hole through, the yoke shape, the fillets and uh, the material applied. So in the next tutor, in the next section we will move on to uh, looking at the adjusting pin. Okay so the final part to this assembly is going to be the adjusting pin. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start on the front plane again, I'm going to sketch on there. So again in a new part and I'm going to create a center line uh, now there's a couple of ways that you can model this, um, but I'm going to use a revolve to model this. Uh, so a center line, I'm going to drop in uh, a distance to that center line of 100 to give me the overall height. And then I'm just going to sketch the outline of a cut through or a section view of that pin. Well, like so. Okay, now we've got that in place. I'm just going to quickly... Uh, dimension that up so we've got the upper section here being 20 mil drop down we've got the diameter at the top being um, uh, 12 so 24 overall so 12 radius coming out um, we have the um, lower section here this is 12 milli uh, diameter so it's going to be six coming out from the side there like so so we've got that pin shape in place now so I'm just going to features I'm going to revolve it wants me to get a revolving line which is at the moment saying it's not closed because that is just because it is a construction line and not a solid line it will still do it around the construction line as we've got the preview it's picking that up there and I'm just going to tick there to show that I am happy with that 360 degree revolve around. And we've got that in place now. Final part is to take a hole through the top there. So I'm going to go sketch. Um, I'm going to sketch onto the front plane. Like so. And I'm going to take a circle. And I'm going to drop that in here. But first of all, I'm going to just take a construction line and go between the top components of there. Now I know it's 10 down, so that means it's halfway down on that. So if I've got that construction line in, find the center point of it that we know is 10 mil down. And this hole is going to have a diameter of 5. Okay, now you'll see if I just turn this on the side, the sketch is actually in the middle of the component. So when I go to cut that, so it's true cut, if I go through the mid as my uh, condition here, uh, my, my end condition rather than blind, if I go to the mid plane, uh, 
what that means is it will cut out both ways so turn that so it's coming out of either side take it at the top and that will come out holes on either side of the component just going to view that so that you can see it in an isometric view again apply material so edit material it's going to be the same alloy as previous so we're going to go to the alloy 1060 alloy apply that and close okay so that is our three components completed that is going to be the end of this first tutorial um, in the next tutorial we are going to look at how we assemble these together and find that center mass um, position so hopefully that was useful for you. Hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial of looking at creating them three components. Um, and I will see you in the next tutorial. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you enjoy the content, give us a thumbs up and a like. And I will see you soon. Bye for now.